Thanks for tuning in to the World XP Podcast. If you're enjoying the content, please drop us up, drop a like, and let us know your thoughts below in the comments. Also, please consider supporting our podcast via the link below. It really helps us out. Olo, welcome to the World XP Podcast, man. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. A little tired, as, as you probably are as well, but I'm hanging yeah. in there. Yeah, 100%. So for those listening, um, this will be on both uh, the soccer channel and the podcast channel. Uh, I was had the... I'm not going to say I had the idea to do what JJ Redick and LeBron were doing before that they did it, but, and obviously they're doing it a lot better than I will do it. Um, but just to talk tactics and, and stuff for soccer, different concepts. And, um, and I think having some people on who've played the game overseas or at, or at a high level is, uh, is going to be a super fun way to do it. It's going to be a lot of trial and error. So we'll, we'll see how this one goes. And then obviously we'll have, uh, Olo back on the show at some point to tell his story of how kind of he went overseas and, and, and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, welcome. Why don't you tell the people uh, kind of who you are and what you do and 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 how you ended up here, I guess, for, yeah. for lack of a better word. <laughs> Thanks for having me. No, I appreciate it. I've been wanting to come on for a long time. Uh, it just has never aligned. Now it has. Now I'm here. Um, Hey guys, uh, for you guys that don't know me, I'm the assistant site director at Capstone um, and master trainer over there. I also play for the uh, men's Arlington uh, semi-pro team with my friend Eric over here. Um, leading, <laughs> leading up to this point, um, I met Eric at the Frederick uh, Fire FC team, um, the MASL3 team. He kind of brought me on and... Um, and yeah, I mean, the world circulates with with soccer players, man. And now I'm glad that that you're making this and putting a stage where people can express how they feel about the game because uh, we we we've got we've got a lot of work to do with this culture. So in this country, yeah, hundred percent. So like I just mentioned to you before, um, everyone's got a question from the previous guest. So the one for you is oh, what's no, one what's spot, I'm terrible. What's one skill that you think everyone should possess and why? One skill? Yeah, and like that everyone should have. And why do you think um, they should have it? One skill that everybody should have. Ooh, that's a good one. Could be anything in life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm trying to decide which one. I have I have two in mind. I'm trying to decide which one is No, give them both. Humans. Give them both. That's fine. Both? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh... Through my recent experience through college and af especially after college, um, communication, not only good communication or not only just communication, I mean, good communication is is really essential for people that are entangled in 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 any sort of relationship, business, uh, romantic friendships uh, on the field like we, you and I are especially now more than ever um especially our coach makes it such a point that communication is key i mean just as simple as telling your teammate left shoulder right shoulder like constructive uh precise cons uh, communication goes a long way man um that's my number one and then probably up there as well is and i've heard this in so many podcasts and and i think i mean it's very very um very apparent in people's lives uh just being emotionally aware about yourself um goes a long way as well just being able to control your emotions um and again we're we're in a soccer podcast right now so that relates to 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 the football um in in all the ways you can't imagine i mean football is a mental game I, at, at our level everyone's everyone is right around the same level it's just the mental that gets people to start every game or or come off the bench and make an impact, whatever it may be, right? Um, so being able to control your mind and which I'm still trying learning how to do. I mean, I'm 25. Um, I have not mastered it. Um, I'm working on it with certain people leading me the right the right way. And then communication as well. It's something that I've gotten used to doing more of in the recent past and 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 a lot of people uh, not a lot of people, but a certain amount of people. Um, I have to thank for that. So, I think those are my two two answers. Yeah, I fully agree, man. Um, and when I first when I first got sent the question, the first my first like 
I was not, you know, like when you see a question, you're like, oh, what would my answer be? My first just gut gut instinct was communication skills, yeah. um, for sure. People so, suck at it. yeah, yeah, hundred yeah, <laughs> percent. So, um, I think maybe since this is the first one of this sort of we'll call it series or whatever, um, maybe we can define a few a few things real quick. So people watching maybe who are younger or not as familiar with with soccer can can know what we're talking about. I think maybe mm-hmm. half space is a good one to define. Um, that's kind of the area in which a, a midfielder will pick up the ball between the lines. Um, and by the lines, I mean like the defensive and the midfield line of the opposing team. Um, what are some other good ones that we could define? Uh, block. We'll say the word block, like mid or low block. Uh, and that's just where the team kind of sets up their defensive, like where they start their press kind of um, and, and the shape of the team and relative to how far up the field they are. Um, those were the I two think, that came to mind. I, I'm sure there's others though. Yeah. Um, I, I'll try, I try, I'll try and think of, of some as, as the conversation goes on. Um, something in my mind is some similar to, to the low block, just high press an example, right? Mm-hmm. Um, high press is one. Um, one that comes to my mind is, and, and these are little details from all those things. Um, turning on the half um, in these pockets that you're talking about. Um, but yeah, I think those are two, two good ones to start with. Yeah. hundred percent. So we were talking yesterday and maybe another good place to start is if you could build a team in any style you want, um, what would the profile of player be in each position? Uh, and so for those listening, uh, profile of player is kind of like there's loads of different ways to play every position in, in soccer, loads of different types of players. Um, for example, you can have a, a big like hold up striker um, like Ibrahimovic or as much uh, hate as Lukaku gets um, <laughs> a player of, of that sort of style, or you can have like a, a small fast one um, why can't you? I or like a pacey one, like Rashford type type player. Um, we and and they I, play the same position in totally different ways. So right. I uh, I would I would I would like if I still played competitive FIFA, I would show my ultimate team because that's my dream team. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, I guess we could start with with the goalie, the first position. Um, I've always been a fan of of Iker Casillas. Mm-hmm. Um, all I mean, all my life I've played with with different types of goalies, really tall goalies that can dive top bins and bottom bins. Um, small goalies that react like cats. Um, yeah, you can still get. I mean, the 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 shorter goalies can get low like any other, uh, better than any other, and can get up to the to those <sighs> top corners. Um. I think someone that I've... Hey, th- one sec. Somebody knocked on the door. No, you're good. No worries. We'll be back. And we're back. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, Well, you wouldn't know because it'll be edited out. So it'll <laughs> be uh five seconds later for you. Um, Okay, you were going goalkeeper. I was going goalkeeper, yes. Uh, the, 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 sh- the good shape of a goalie would be in the shape of Iker Casillas. Um, I love a goalie that can fly around the goal, um, be good with his feet, say, I mean, this dude, this dude was good at everything. Um, obviously there's now in the modern game, there's goalies better with their feet. It's emphasized like in the, in, in Pep's game, um, he's a, the, the goalie is a crucial player in the build out, but Iker Casillas was was a beast for me, man. So he would he would fit my profile for a goalie. Yeah, for I me mean, as I was building, I would um like a perfect goalkeeper, or the size would be slightly concerning. So somebody like Allison or Neuer, yeah, um would be the ones. I believe Allison is taller. Let me Google that so I don't just say some stupid things. Taller than Neuer? Yeah, and... I mean they're all up. There. No, no, no. He's not tired. He's not taller than Neuer, but I mean um taller than Casillas. Oh, for sure. Uh, yeah, he's six four. For sure. Um, so I think the size as well 
uh, helps, but Allison with the, with the one-on-one -on -one ability, especially. Um, but I think the reason for that, that we talk about building out from the back is the spacing piece. Um, mm -hmm. and when you've got, like, how would you space your, your team? Cause the spacing obviously between a back three and a back four is different, right? It's like with a back three, you're more, um, defensive on, on kind of the central zones. Cause you've got three center backs, uh, versus just two. And for me, I always liked four in the back because when you build out your goalkeeper can become the third center back. Right. And then uh, if, uh, if, if, if the spacing is up a little bit, yeah. If the spacing is done, is done properly. What are your thoughts on, on that? Um, I think in the professional game, that's, that's the way to go. Um, when the, when the goalkeeper can join in the, uh, the, the initial play, um, now that's, you don't really see that in lower levels. I want to say, I mean, keepers try, but keep it like, keep it like top, top, top level. Like if you, if, if you could build your perfect team and like right. tactics like that you would want, because yeah. obviously the play, like we have limit physical and technical and tactical limitations right. that, that they don't. Um, yeah. I mean, like it, at the game in its purest sense, if everything was in a perfect world, um, yeah. no, I mean, like you're saying, I would, I would play a back four and play a back four, and the and the goalkeeper would play a, a crucial role in playing out. Um, the keeper would touch the ball pretty much every play. If if he didn't, then he wouldn't be my goalie. Yeah, you would so have would to, you have have to be good with his feet? Mm -hmm. So I think there's at least that what I've seen and what I've paid attention to. There's kind of three, maybe patterns of movement that I think are, are pretty common. Mm -hmm. Um, one is the fullback would push high. The winger would check into the half space and the midfielder mm -hmm. would drop into where the fullback would be. So you have that. So if this is, this hand is the sideline and this hand is the midfielder kind of rotates in this way. And so then you can have the winger get into the half space, the fullback still pushing and providing the width, keeping the, the opposing fullback honest. Uh, and then you have kind of the, and then in that space, the sit, the six would sit. So you'd have this triangle kind of moving and you have the six, uh, as, as the pivot. Um, and then you also have the one where, um, the fullback, right. If these are two center backs, the fullback leaves and comes into the middle as another six. And so the winger stays wide and the midfielder pushes on. So you still have that triangle, but it's just rotating in a different way. Right. Um, what how are you like what so obviously the inverted fullback is relatively new um mm -hmm. but as soon as it happened i was like oh that makes sense but there's also not a lot of fullbacks that can play that way super like super effectively right. obviously zinchenko comes to mind and, and a few others but how like to open up space i would prefer that piece because then my winger stays in one-on-one -on -one uh situations right. wide mm -hmm. and the eight or the ten or whoever is still in the half space in the middle where you kind of want them so that's yeah. i would prefer it that way I, what do you think um I, honestly from from what i've seen you want your you want your midfielders getting the ball every time mm -hmm. um, that's why they're midfielders that's why they're in the middle um you trust them with your life with the ball right um I like the idea of the fullback, the opposite fullback creeping into the field, um, similar to what you were doing yesterday. Um, so good job. Thanks. <laughs> More than ever now, a player like Trent or like Shevchenko does such a great job of filling in that that gap when when things rotate. Um, I feel like center mids are being now being put at right back and left back, not not as often as as you want to see it, but they're able to play and it's it goes to the idea of total football like every position has to be able to have a certain level of tech uh of a technical uh understanding and tactical as well um but everything flowing in that in that motion just helps out the disorient the other players which the movement is what you need mm -hmm. uh, i think our team does does a pretty good job um for the level that we play at in, in rotating um, positions and filling in holes that have been left out. So yes, the, the right back and left back for me, um, 
I, I would I would want them on the ball, but also I feel like a good mix wouldn't hurt, you know. Yeah, no, no, no. Of course, it's not one one size fits all. Um, because yeah. you you talked about the midfielders kind of in those right back left back positions, which they are occasionally, but we see that as the game has evolved, like there's the the ten doesn't really exist anymore. Yeah. Um, and then by the same token, like true wingers also don't really exist anymore. Um, they're they're kind yeah. of you either have like. Basically, what you have is is midfielders that operate in the half space or wingers that operate in the half space, and they've right. got slightly different profiles of players. But that's all part of the, like, how do I get the ball to my playmakers in space, yeah. and how do I pull the defenders to get them the opportunity? Like, how do I move yeah. the like the defenders around to get them the ball in the situations where they can be most effective? And it all it all boils down to just communicating. I mm -hmm. mean you're silent on the field all this free-flowing motion doesn't work at all so mm -hmm. um i think when i was in college i uh my my coach tried to mimic the um the dorman style mm -hmm. some dorman some man say like he would always call out these 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 names and uh he would he would love when the winger checked in into the half space and turned mm -hmm. but it, it was nice at times but that creates for me if you do that every time first of all predictable you never want to do something every single play in my opinion um second of all it clogs up the space way too much and that's when your center mids have to push out but then really at that point your center mids are not in the position that they in my opinion the position that they want to be in to be most effective you know i mean maybe a center mid pops out wide I did that a couple of times yesterday and, and mm -hmm. it worked for the team. But then, you know, you talk about into your, into your, uh, your center mids, not touching the ball. You're so you would want your center mids to, to touch the ball consistently. Maybe not every, you're not going to touch the ball every play, but um, I feel like you just got to do what's right for in the moment and in the play. Um, mm -hmm. And it kind of just all flows nicely together. If you have good chemistry and, or on an understanding of each other, you know, that just comes with reps and reps and reps, which all the professional teams have. Um, if we're talking about the Madrids, the Man Cities, the et cetera. Well, we are kind of, to be honest. This is what, like we're talking about like what philosophy of the spacing do you find to be the most effective for you? Right. Obviously, we do it mm -hmm. in a not as good way as those, but like if if you were ha to have that pattern of play that you wanted, and you had there was no technical problem in executing that mm -hmm. that thing like how would you do it i guess is what i'm asking i've always been a a, a mind that that likes when things rotate throughout the entire field like we were talking about i don't i don't think i mean obviously you want you want one way to play and and you want structure um and repetitive structure will win you games but i think the freedom of play is super important for me especially in the middle um uh, free free and i'm and i know we're talking about the the madrids the man cities um but something that that was that was enlightening um with coming onto this new team um if you're in the midfield it's it's very free flowing like you have the freedom like a six the six spot has to be filled whether it's you as the six or the eight or the ten doesn't matter you know so you're all you're all constantly moving and helping each other um and again it comes back to it comes back to the, the total football aspect having every every player on the team have that certain level of 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 technical abilities that makes all of this free flowing happen, right? Because before, bef way before teams would were just a right back would be a right back would be on the right side, Gary center Neville. back would not, even, would not even go up, just boot the ball. Right? Yeah, center mids would operate where exactly where their position is. Strikers were the goal scorers, right? Now, mm -hmm. as the game has evolved, um, I love I love myself a center forward. Um, I think. I think that center forward and 10 role, like you said, is disappearing, which is sad because that 
at that at that moment when that was when that was when the 10 roll was and when it was in its prime that's when i loved watching the watching uh the sport that we love um i resonate with that a lot because i used to play uh center forward as as a kid growing up that's why i play center mid right now the the role is disappearing um and i've i've gotten pushed back a little bit on the field since since there's no striker now that loves to drop um it's more of that hold up striker that that is that is dominating the uh the game right now for me a striker would be like a Ronaldo Nazario or like a Benzema that that helps out his team more than just scoring goals. Mm -hmm. you know, more, you know, you compare Ronaldo and Benzema. Benzema's not doing three thousand step overs and fake shots and all that stuff, but he has some flair into him. You know, he drops, mm -hmm. connects with his wingers, connects with the center mid. So, for me, in the attack at least, um, you want that profile of a of a of a striker right and even the yeah. wingers the wingers the winger wingers are super important for the team i mean and we'll get into the wingers in a, in a second but i don't know what, what your what your uh thoughts are on on a, on a center forward and 10 yeah you said hearing, but... i don't disagree with um the interchange and stuff but i guess my point would be um or that i was trying to get to was even mm -hmm. if a winger switches with the, with one of the midfielders or the the fullback switches with the the six or whatever the yeah. the the movement is still the same but the players just know what the movement is supposed to be in all the positions on the field so you yeah. still have the same pattern of play within the interchange and within the rotation so if the nine goes out wide um oh, we should also we should also say all the numbers so um one we don't really say one the goalkeeper two uh, right back three left back, four and five center back, six defensive mid, uh, eight is like kind of box to box mm -hmm. midfielder, does both sides, 10 attacking midfielder, nine is striker, um, was 11 is what left well, wing and seven. seven and seven is right wing. Um, regardless of if they all switch, if the nine switches with the 11, they're all like the movement that those two players would have in those positions is still the same, but the interchange still exists. Um, and I think that's the that's the piece um, where the structure comes, but also the free flowing is that you have the ability to do the, diff the all the different roles um, yeah. as well. In terms of the tens, or like a ten or a nine, teams are so good at pressing now, and then also teams still want to play out of the back. So if you don't have a nine that can hold the ball up for you. Mm -hmm. then it makes it difficult to play out of the back, right? Because the, if 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 you have a press, right? If if like a Klopp team is pressing you mm -hmm. and they're going off pressing triggers and stuff and you can't break the line um, to like play a little clip ball into the striker and he can't hold it up, you're just going to be defending for the whole game. Right. So to your point of like, yeah, the game has moved to hold up strikers. Well, it's because that's how the the game has gone. So when you've got somebody, the reason why it has to be that way, in my opinion, is because when Pep was playing out of the back and popularizing that sort of style back in mm -hmm. like two thousand eight, whatever, whenever he started with Barca, right. he had Messi dropping into that pocket. And nobody else has Messi. So it's like <laughs> so it's like what's what's the next best substitute? Is you have a guy that can hold the ball up for you? Um so I don't know, right? I have I often go back and forth between kind of you've got um a compact midfield shape and two kind of striker types, one to hold the ball up, one to go in behind, right. versus the three up top where one hold and you got wingers on either side. Mm -hmm. Um because it can be super effective to have to have two kind of strikers occupying the center backs and and a ten kind of ro roaming underneath and to for one of the strikers to spin in behind right it makes it super difficult because the six is always occupied and the center backs are always occupied from the other team and so then it creates matchup issues in terms of numbers right you always want to have overloads in the defensive area like a plus one so it's like what do you do do you bring a midfielder back do you bring a um a, a fullback inside um. 
but a lot then a lot of teams don't like playing without the width of wingers and so unless you have fullbacks that are flying up then you kind of are then playing a, a like a 352 or something like that um lots of lots of options yeah loads of options right but it it depends on how the spacing and oftentimes 433 can morph into a 352 in a game six drops in between the two center backs and and the you still have the two right. two eights sitting there um and then one of the wingers tucks inside and the other one tuck, like so you can still end up in that situation or like a four, 343 three, something like that yeah. um but like you said it's about creating spacing and then overloads especially um so overloads just to quickly define as if you have you have a numerical advantage in an area of the field whether it's offensively or defensively um a lot of coaches try to create overloads um in the half spaces or on the wings, you can get a, a 2v1 with the winger and the fullback against the opposing fullback. Uh, and that that's can be super dangerous. You get to the byline, put a up back in, something like that. So, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know if that answered your question, but those are no. kind of my thoughts on this. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, you uh, sent, and I guess I'm a little, I'm a little bit of uh, biased in the sense um since i've played that position the center forward role mm -hmm. i i want to see that come back because i think with the right personnel super effective um now i don't know if he'll come back teams are are very aggressive in their press now mm -hmm. um more than ever honestly and it just all I'm saying is, is it'd just be nice to to see that free flowing interchange. I want to see more teams like Man City, and obviously Man City's Man City's Man City, right? But uh, even now they have Holland, right? So they play Holland yeah. doesn't drop back and play that that sort of that sort of role. Yeah, and more hold up. Well, according to Roy Keane, he's a League Two player. So what do I know? <laughs> Technical abilities, League Two player. I like when um. I like when Foden plays that role or Julian and drops back a little bit. I mean, they can mm -hmm. still runs and all that stuff. They're not going to hold the ball up off some six foot five center back yeah. or pounds, but they, and, and that's, that's my answer. Like profile. I, I take a player like Foden over Holland and I know that's uh, my the comments opinion. are going to kill you for that. I know. I know. And I like how, <laughs> I like Holland. I like Holland, but I I don't I don't resonate with him as much as I do other players. Yeah, well, you play similar. You play. You don't play like Holland does. Yeah. Um, I will say though the this uh, the real spacing between. Do you remember um, El Clasico, the five nil when PK is yeah, walking yeah. around going like this? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember? Um, I think it was the fourth goal. Maybe the fifth one, Messi drops in to pick up the ball and he sprays mm -hmm. a diagonal on the floor yeah. between the, I think it's um Ramos and... Pepe? Or... No, who would have been at right back? Uh, Was Carvo? No, Car not Carvo. No, Carvo. No, no, no. Um, Arbaloa. Arbaloa, yeah. Uh, and and David Abiel, Villa. Abiel was the center back. And uh, David Villa makes the diagonal run from high and wide and the space is created because Messi pulls the center back out, yeah. uh, and then and then he cuts inside on his left and puts a diagonal right. So yeah. that's where that's where that works. But I would wonder if, um, like watching that back, obviously it's it's genius, right? From from Messi and and Davavia and and Via obviously has a good finish. But I wonder how the communication would work now on the press. Because the, those teams were not set up quite the same. Like if you think of the Liverpool teams that went that won the Champions League, mm. like the spacing, I don't know if that spacing would be the same. So if Messi pulls off the off of you don't think Van the Dijk, same outcome would happen if they played a different team right now? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because the pressing is different. So yeah. like, so in my head, I, I'm picturing. When Liverpool would go when they beat City, and they'd have Fabinho sitting in front of the back four. In my head, Messi pulls off the back four, and he runs into Fabinho, and it's a different kind of. The spacing is different. Right. I don't know. Um, the, the pass probably wouldn't be there. Yeah. Well, if Trent is defending, it's probably always there. But, um, 
but yeah, so the spacing is different. So it's interesting to hear to see that like kind of clash of style. So I wonder like where I would I would almost wonder if you could have a, a situation in where you're playing maybe like a four. No, let's see. I'm trying to get my numbers right. As if you had two false nines and one team and no striker. So you so you would have to um so it, it would be almost like Let's see, we, we want, let's see what we want, fullbacks to provide the width. So maybe you have one kind of focal point, but you have two tens just sitting, so like a three, a three, four, like two, one type situation. Um, and you could still have one focal point to occupy the center backs, but then you have two kind of floating in that situation and your three mm -hmm. center backs, their wing backs provide the width. And then you got the two six slash eights providing protection in front of the back four. I wonder how that would, how that would work. Um, let's ask coach Eric. Well, that's the point. We're discussing it, man. Mm -hmm. how, like, how do you think that that would work? Cause teams have done that. Or maybe if I've played a, I've played a three back before mm -hmm. and it's gone. I mean, it's gone well. Um, those formations, phew, demand more out of like right now um leverkusen mm -hmm. if grimaldo and Frimpong weren't there as beasts as they are formation does not work right the the demand out of the the wing backs in a three is crazy i mean even a five yeah i don't know i love i love it personally I'd prefer i mean you could i like it. i like playing in a three but yeah. I, I I want to get more to like the the false the those strikers dropping off of the back four. So that's even if it's four in the back and you've got like two sixes or eights sitting in front of the back four, and maybe two wingers that high and wide occupying the fullbacks, and then so it would be on paper it would be like a four a four 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 two or four two four type setup, but both strikers drop off the back the center backs. And there's no there's no edge of the team the edge would be the the wide players the wide players so it'd be the diagonals would be the edge that's an interesting question man um because right now if 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 any if any if any formation and any team have a 10 or a center forward um apart from the four three threes or the four two three ones um the four two two that second striker would would work off that that top striker. I mean to 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 be to be realistic, that'd be a good experiment. I don't know. Um, that's what we're here for. You're not supposed to say. Think about it. What do you think? Like okay, so if let's build a team that would kind of work in that way. So you'd have to, you'd have wide players of the profile of like Mbappe or Vinny Jr., right? The pace to get right. in behind and be a threat in behind, right? You can't have um like a a Perisic or or somebody like that who's super good on the ball, super technical, good delivery, but then they don't have the pace to get in behind. You ha they have to be almost like Rashford uh type player, Leon Bailey, um Musa Diaby type players. And you'd kind of want them to yeah, you'd you'd want them to be inverted, I think Would as you well. Would you no want wingers. to be well? If you're having two players drop from the strikers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you need your wingers to be a little taller, or no? What do you think? No. Why? For example, if you're if you're dropping uh, and and I talked I talked to this with somebody the other day. Um, if you're having a a center forward be the the little guy, not a like quote unquote yeah, yeah. little guy. Let's use let's use use Foden as the example. He yeah. would be one. He would be one of them. Do you want your other little fast wingers in there, or would you want to involve a little bit of physicality on the wings? Well, if the physicality if the, being well, height and or pace, like you're saying, like the Mbappe or the Leon Bailey's. So in in my head, the point would be, or the idea would be, you overload the midfield and you create one v ones in the back on like the weak side um so the center backs have nobody to mark so that's weird for them right and then you'd have basically the idea would be you overload in the midfield and you get diagonals on the floor 
in like one v ones to the wingers. So, I mean, maybe it could be. I don't know, right? That's the, so that would really work more as if it's in your own half, so you have the space in behind. But I'm not sure how that would deal with a low block very well. What what formation do you think would that the this scenario would would work with? What are you thinking? Like to set up my own team. Well, the formation you just said with the two strikers that drop at center mm -hmm. forwards, yeah, not yeah. having one up top. Yeah. How would you? And I'm trying to think about it. Um, exploit. How how would that formation work versus like what what formation against would be that have this have the the best success that a, a four three like a four three three or four two three one or and so you would end up overloading the middle so you'd have a four v three in midfield and you right. control the middle yeah no that's a tricky one man um I've never <laughs> you you never think about you never think about these these. These things, two, two, two strikers dropping and not having a, a striker up there to hold up the play. Um, so one, so one, you'd almost so if this is the opposing team's back four yeah. and your strikers drop off, yeah. you'd have one kind of in this like traditional ten area, and then one in the half space. So the one in the half space can go play with the winger on that side, yeah. and so then you create your overload in midfield, right? It's it would be staggered. Yeah. So you have your two sixes, eights, and then your ten um, striker would shift kind of between the two. Yeah. And so then you'd have the other winger up up there. And you could go play. So it'd be like Foden and Foden and um I don't even know. There's another one at the at the moment. Um like Benz. Foden and Benz or something 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 like that. Like Benz when um like two, three years ago, mm -hmm. Benz would when they were playing with Valverde on the right and it was like a Benz Vinny type situation up top. And it was like kind of a lopsided four, two, three, one kind of how Benz would go over to play with Vinny in that, on that side, but you would just do that on both sides. And then you'd have like, um, obviously having somebody like Rodri or whatever, sitting in the middle, like Rodri and Chuameni would be the two like midfielders. Right, so big cover, lots of ground, good on the ball, all the things that you would want. I don't, I don't know, I don't know if that that would be my go to formation. I don't know. I, doesn't I think have, doesn't have to be. We're just talking concepts, man. Just concepts. Right. Let's test it out. All right, <laughs> I've stumped you. Um, yeah. That's a good one. Think about it. We'll get you back. Um, I do have to bounce, like we talked about before. Yeah. Um, for those listening, where you want to plug uh Capstone or any of the things that or your Insta your coach Instagram right. page or any of those things, where can the people find you at? Uh they can find me at coach underscore Olo. Um that's my Instagram handle um for my my capstone uh role. Um, they can find me at the Falls Church location, um, near Mosaic. That's where that's where Capstone is. Um, we we have a busy summer coming up, so if you need training, we we got you. Um, but yeah, man, Capstone's growing, and and I'm excited to be to be an early part of it because the the business just started a couple a couple years ago. Very nice. Yes, All right, guys. Sir. Um. Super weird episode today with the <laughs> timings and, and all sorts of stuff. But um, we'll get him back to, uh, to continue on the conversation. Um, we'll see you guys next time. Peace. <laughs>